Internal medicine is the specialty that deals with the diagnosis, treatment, and prevention of a broad and extensive number of diseases that affect adult patients. But internal medicine is more difficult than other specialties to categorize and nail down, because it's so broad and expansive in what you can do with it. There are also more fellowship options after internal medicine than just about any other specialty, which we'll get to shortly. Those that choose internal medicine are stereotypically the inquisitive and thoughtful ones who love learning, want to be heavily involved with direct patient care, and enjoy the challenge of analyzing broad information to figure out the puzzle to help their patients get back to a healthy baseline. Internal medicine doctors are the generalists of generalists, treating a vast variety of medical conditions, whether common or rare, complex or straightforward, acute or chronic. The stereotype of internal medicine physicians is that they sit around, hours on end, thinking about how to micromanage each of their patients' conditions, without ever using their hands. This is partially true. Internal medicine is much more of an intellectual specialty compared to some other specialties, but they do minor procedures occasionally, such as thoracentesis, paracentesis, central line placement, intubation, and others. In the outpatient setting, it's more common to do steroid joint injections, pap smears, ultrasound, skin tag or wart removals, and the like. There are a few ways to categorize the specialty. Outpatient internal medicine doctors work exclusively in the clinic, or outpatient setting, where patients schedule an appointment, have a brief 15-minute visit, and head back home. In this setting, you'll be dealing with health screenings, vaccinations, addressing chronic and milder conditions, and serving as their healthcare quarterback, referring them to specialists as necessary. With inpatient, on the other hand, you'll be treating patients who are admitted, meaning they are staying in the hospital for several days. These are usually sicker patients than what you'll see in the outpatient setting, often including acute conditions or exacerbations of chronic conditions. In IM residency, the clinical focus is adult-focused primary care internal medicine and inpatient hospital medicine, meaning taking care of patients admitted to the hospital. You'll be rotating through the wards, ICU, and various subspecialty electives where you will help admit, manage, and discharge patients. Outpatient clinical rotations are also foundational, and provide more manageable hours compared to your inpatient rotations. Here you'll be seeing less acute patients while establishing continuity of care, meaning a more longitudinal relationship with your patients. The flexibility of internal medicine is attractive, as you have a variety of options in practice setting, in addition to the widest variety of specialties to choose from through fellowship. After a couple years of residency, you are in a position to make another decision. Do you want to go out and practice after general IM, or subspecialize into cardiology, gastroenterology, immunology, or something else? Medical students that choose internal medicine are also generally inquisitive, and love the intellectual aspects of medicine. They're the ones who enjoy complex puzzles, taking in vast quantities of information through history, physical exam, and various labs and imaging, and putting together a diagnosis and management plan for each individual patient. After completing three years of internal medicine residency, you can choose to specialize with fellowship. Cardiovascular disease, also called cardiology, is a three-year fellowship focusing on diseases relating to the heart. Cardiology is an extremely well-studied field with a robust scientific backing for its treatments, meaning often good outcomes and instant gratification. After cardiology fellowship, you can specialize further with advanced heart failure, interventional cardiology, electrophysiology, and others. Gastroenterology is also a highly competitive fellowship, lasting three years, with similarly high compensation. GI doctors do many procedures, with not just endoscopies and colonoscopies, but endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography and liver biopsies as well. To be happy as a gastroenterologist, you have to be okay dealing with feces, as colonoscopies are bread and butter. However, you can also subspecialize further, such as with transplant hepatology, which is an additional one year of training after GI fellowship. 
Pulmonary and Critical Care is a three-year fellowship for those who want to take care of the very sick patients in the ICU. ICU patients, compared to floor patients, are generally more complex, as they're often receiving multiple interventions, such as respiratory assistance through ventilators or pressors to maintain their blood pressure in states of shock. ICU doctors spend a great deal of time having deep and often very emotional discussions with families of the critically ill, as this is an incredibly trying time for everyone involved. Pulmonologists on the other hand are lung doctors. They see patients both in the hospital setting on the floors, and in the clinic, and are the specialists for lung pathology including cancers, COPD, asthma, pulmonary hypertension and many other conditions. Pulmonologists also frequently perform bronchoscopies, where a tube is inserted into the trachea to biopsy a mass or to clear a mucus plug. Infectious disease, or ID doctors, deal with patients who have a variety of bacterial, viral, fungal, and parasitic infections. You'll be using labs, imaging, physical exam, and history to figure out what bug is causing the patient's symptoms. Did they go on a cruise recently? travel out of the country? Any contact with animals? These all play an important role in narrowing the differential diagnosis. Hematology and oncology is focused on blood disorders and cancers. Hematology specifically deals with diseases related to the blood and its components as they affect the lymphoid and myeloid cells. They often deal with bleeding disorders, such as platelet disorders, leukemia, which is cancer of the white blood cells, and various anemias involving dysfunctional red blood cells. Oncology is focused on the diagnosis and treatment of cancer. Oncologists work closely with pathologists, radiologists, surgeons, and other fields to coordinate care for cancer patients. Nephrology, is the specialty focused on the kidney, dealing with everything from acute kidney failure to end-stage renal disease. You'll often be managing patients on dialysis, which is a mechanical process whereby machines mimic the function of the kidney to filter the blood. This is a delicate process requiring careful attention to electrolytes, and acid, base levels. There's also endocrinology, rheumatology, sports medicine, sleep medicine, hospice and palliative medicine, geriatric medicine, allergy and immunology, addiction, and adolescent medicine to name a few. There's a lot to love about internal medicine. Most prominently, it's a specialty that offers tremendous flexibility. If you want to work as a hospitalist, taking care of admitted patients, you can do that straight after IM residency. Internal medicine doctors also find themselves involved with providing medical recommendations, placements and discussions to ensure good follow-ups. With this brief introduction to internal medicine, subsequent videos in this series would be discussions of various topics related to internal medicine. So click on the subscribe button if you haven't, and remember to put on the notification bell.